This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Tahatin County. But before that, this video is brought to you by Gizmo UK and Doughboy2913. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the Tahatin County map can be found over at DRModding's itch.io page. I will have a link to both versions of the map down in the description below, as well as the mod pack that he is saying that you're going to need for this map to work exactly how you're going to see it here in this particular video. As such, this map is available for PC players only for a few reasons. One, the map is released over at itch.io, therefore it is not available over at the Giants Mod Hub, and therefore it is not going to be available for console players, because the only way to get a mod on console is through the Giants Mod Hub. Two, this is a 4X map. As such, once again, we have yet to see a 4X map release and stay released for the current gen consoles that are supported by Farming Simulator 22. Maybe in the future, once we drop support for the old gen consoles, maybe we'll see 4X map support for consoles come. But until then, this is gonna be a PC only map. Let me read you some of the description. This is fictional rural Iowa County in an expansive 4X map, which is meticulously crafted, drawing inspiration from real locations to bring you an authentic farming experience like never before. As you step into the vast landscape, you'll be greeted with endless scenic views that capture the heart and soul of American heartland. Rolling hills, lush farmlands, and picturesque countryside vistas set the stage for your farming adventure. Now, before we jump into the map, I do want to take a quick look at downloading this map and also what to do once you have the files downloaded. In the description, there are three links to drmodding's itch.io site. The first is going to take you to this page to download the map that we are going to be looking at during this video. There is also a row crop ready variant of this map that you could download. The reason I'm not looking at the row crop ready version is quite honestly, the row crop ready version has more errors in the log when loading up the map than the standard version of the map. And that's why we're taking a look at just the standard version. But if you are dead set on using the row crop ready version, it is available. It is linked down in the description. Just a warning, there are more errors in the log related to the row crop ready version. You may find some gameplay elements are not working as a result of those errors. To download the map, we're just gonna click on this download now button. It's going to take us to a page where we're going to have the option of giving a free will donation to the map author. And if you really want to do that, well, you can go ahead and do that here, but that is not required. If you just want to download the map itself, you can say, no, thanks. Just take me to the download. And from here, we're going to click on download and it's going to open up a media fire tab that we can then click on this blue download button to then ultimately download the map itself. Now, in addition to downloading one of the two versions of the map, we will also need to take a look at this mod pack. Now, this mod pack does say that you don't have to have these mods, but the map most likely will not look as it does in this video without this mod pack. And I do have to say, I'm not a giant fan of how the map author is doing the distribution of these additional mods. He has downloaded them all. He's put them up in a pack. Extremely convenient for you, the player. Not so much convenient for the mod authors, not the map offers, the mod authors of the 40 plus mods that are included in this pack. Legacy Ag, those are all linked off of his itch.io page. If you're a kind of person that likes to give free will donations, he's not going to have an opportunity to get your traffic to his other work because you're getting them straight from this mod pack. Okay. Use mods. Most of his work is over at the giants mod hub. He's not going to get any download credit for anyone that downloads this mod pack 
because he got one download when the map author downloaded these mods, put them in a mod pack. Let's say this mod pack gets 10,000 downloads. OK Use Mods gets credit for one, not credit for 10,000. Giants pays modders per download. In essence, we're stealing from OK Use Mods. In essence, same is going to hold for Elk Mountain Modding. While he does have a few reference to a off-site location, there are a few also reference from the Giants mod up. I would have much rather liked to have seen mods that are linked from the Giants mod hub, like this warehouse mod by Pascal Cause. I would like to have seen that listed and flagged as a required mod. That way, if you did not have this mod in your mod folder, the game would auto download it from the Giants mod hub, giving him credit for that download. Now that sadly is not possible for other things like Trailer Park Farms is shop building here because it's linked outside the Giants mod hub, but it could have simply been done. Hey, these are the mods I strongly suggest using. These are the mods I built this map with. Download these from these other mod authors download sites. That way the map looks how it should. Now I fully understand a vast majority of people wouldn't take that much time and actually read the description of what needs to be done in order to get those. So I fully understand why the mod pack has been created and is being distributed. I just really kind of would prefer that it be done a slightly different way. But again, to download that, we're gonna click on the download button. We're gonna give no thanks. Just take me to the downloads and click download here. It's gonna open another Mediafire link. We're gonna download that. If, if you wanna give free will donations, don't do it here. Go to each of these itch.io pages and consider doing free will donations to those instead. That way the money goes to the proper location. With those files now downloaded, we're gonna have the standard map. We're gonna have the row crop ready version of the map. We're gonna take one of those. We're gonna right click. We're gonna say extract all. I went ahead and done that. So we're gonna get the public unzip folder. We're gonna go within that. We're gonna have then the public folder. And this is the file that we need to put within our mod folder for the map to load up. With respect to the mod pack, we have that located right here. Once again, we're going to extract all, right click, extract all. Once that is done, we're going to get a folder. And then here are all of the mods that are part of that mod pack. And we're going to put these into our mod folder. Now you'll see several of them have the map name added to the back of them. So that is implying that quite possibly there has been some slight edits to the individual mods in order for that to happen. But then we have other things like animal limit increase 64. There's not been any changes to that. That could have come straight off the Giants mod hub. In addition, we have something like, you know, easy dev controls that also has not had any changes that could have easily come off the Giants mod hub as well. Anyway, enough with that rant. We're going to go ahead and select all 41 of these mods, stick them into your mod folder, and then we'll go ahead and fire the map back up. As I just mentioned, in addition to the mods that we are gonna use when we typically look at maps, that is additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. We have 41 other mods that are included in that mod pack that we are gonna be using. We're not gonna run down through that list, but I do wanna make sure that we come down here and we uncheck premium expansion. Note that it is not checks checked and then we'll go ahead and load the map up now i also mentioned earlier the row crop ready version has more errors in the map than this version that's not saying this version is completely free of errors and warnings there are some of those and we're going to run through those once this map loads in we are loading this map up in new farmer mode i would highly recommend if you're going to play this map Use farm manager mode because your starting equipment is the same. You start out with a pickup truck. You don't own any land in any game mode. So starting in farm manager mode 
will give you a good hunk of cash to buy land and buy machinery. Again, if you start in new farm mode, you're going to get a pickup truck and you do not own land. In farm manager or start from scratch, you start out with a pickup truck and you do not own any land. So once again, why not give yourself the best start possible by again, picking the farm manager mode. Now let's take a quick look at the log here and we'll run down through what some of these warnings and errors mean and how this may or may not affect your ultimate gameplay. This is why we load the map up and show the logs with the map loading in. I want to be fully transparent with respect to any potential issues that you might have. I'm going to come up here to the very top of the log. So now we're just iterating through all the various buildings. We've got a warning here related to a texture basically being in the wrong format. That likely is not going to cause any issue. That's just kind of an attention to detail message there. We've got a error related to a specialization. It looks like it's been duplicated in one of the mods that is listed as required. It is one of the mods that has the map name added to the end. So I don't know if that duplication maybe was a result of it being modified for this map or not. Again, it's a, it's a duplication. It likely won't cause any gameplay issues, but there's always the potential. Now here we have two things that have failed to load entirely. And one is a water fill trigger and one is a buy liquid fertilizer, XML. Both of those are most likely missing from the map as a result of those two errors. We have a couple fill types that are missing with respect to something. I don't think that's gonna affect us really. We've got a couple slightly incorrect versions of texture files. Again, kind of an attention to detail, but it shouldn't affect us too terribly much as far as gameplay goes. We've got a shapes file that's too big for console. Not a problem. This map's not gonna be available on console. We do have an audio file of an airplane flying over that is in stereo. The game requires mono audio files. So at most, it's, it's bigger than it needs to be. The map could be slightly smaller in file size if a mono file was included. We're gonna skip through the top here related to some ground textures. We've got some light lights, some lights that are using a deprecated attribute within Giants Editor. And the message here is just telling us, hey, why don't you use this other thing instead? Uh, again, kind of attention to detail effort. We have a, a warning here related to row crop soybeans as not being a valid crop type for the precision farming mod. Not that big of a deal, but one thing to note that when you are possibly driving over a field of soybeans with a row crop sensor, if you are playing with precision farming, it may not scan correctly because of this particular warning. I don't know if maybe precision farming needs to be updated locally in order to add row crop soybean as a valid build type. I will tell you, if you look the line above that, this map does have a custom soil map. Here we have three entries for unknown fill types. Soybean straw, clover windrow, and dry clover windrow. That is at a selling station for bales, and then a selling station for bales one. So there may be two bale sell points on the map that may not accept soybean straw. Honestly, I don't even know if soybean straw is a valid fill type on this map. I know the map does not have clover. So clover and dry clover windrow I don't know why they're even being listed here, unless at some point in time, this map was gonna have clover and then it got removed. We've got a couple of message here relating to, again, a companion mod, the OK used mods dealership, placeable unload. So I don't think that's gonna affect your gameplay.
And then the one thing that I'm most concerned about, but again, I don't think it's going to really affect you, is we have a few repeating Lua errors around the ranch house and the ranch house garage. Something about the nodes relating to the bathroom vanity are not correct. And we get that a couple times repeating here. Got a couple messages related to the anhydrous ammonia add-on and unknown placeable hotspot type of anhydrous. And then that is pretty much the log entries. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA itself. This is again a 4X map, so these fields are a lot larger than they would initially appear. You can see they are also rather organic in size and shape. So if you're a map, if you're a player, I should say, that likes nice square rectangular fields, this is not going to be the map for you. If you are a player that is looking for a more organic, more realistic experience, then this map might be right up your alley. Now, with respect to crops available on this map, this map has excluded sugarcane and poplar from its listing. And to that, it has added silage corn, alfalfa, narrow soybean, and rye. Let's go ahead and take a look at our lands overview. And you're going to see that we don't own any land at the start. So it is like this, as I said earlier, in all play modes. New farmer, farm manager, and start from scratch. It's going to look exactly like this. So why not start in farm manager mode? Give yourself the best bank balance possible. That way you'll have the most money to first buy your land and start working with your buying your, your farm machinery. Now, as far as farms, there are multiple farm areas available on this map. We start out here at the shop, farmland ID 100. Directly to the right of that, we have farmland ID 108. This is gonna be a pig farm, dairy farm, and a chicken farm. Viable $245,000. Farmland ID 106 is a cow area, $546,000. Farmland ID 101 is going to have an arable farm for $985,000. There's a horse farm at Farmland ID 117. I'm trying to find these right now. Right here for $40,000. We have farmhouses at farmland ID 94 and 95. Now they are just farmhouses themselves. They are $57,000 and $161,000. We have an arable farm at farmland ID 93 for $75,000. We have a pig area at farmland ID 92 for $722,000. We have a farmhouse at farmland ID 87. Completely escaping me right now. Right here, farmland ID 87. We have a, a shed, interesting enough, associated with farmland ID 86. You'll see that when we get around to our flyover. We have a cow farm at farmland ID 46. That is located right there. We have an arable farm at farmland ID 70, as well as 52. We have some silos that are available at farmland ID 54. We have a cow, sheep, pig, and chicken farm at farmland ID 70. I can bought for $728,000. We have a large pig building at farmland ID 22. I bought for $26,000. And we have a farmhouse over here at farmland ID 36. 
and that can be bought for two hundred and five thousand dollars. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included. Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? You see, we have quite the variety of farmland sizes and costs. It doesn't really appear to go by just sizes alone. There clearly must be a price differential based on what is available on the land, as opposed to simply just pricing out price per hectare. Taking a look at our field calculator screen, this is gonna show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And then ultimately we can go back and cross-reference this with the farmland lease screen to see which farmland is tied to any one particular field. Because I did see several farmlands that included multiple fields in the other screen. While we do have several fields here that are less than one hectare in size, we do have others that are much larger. So farmland, or sorry, field 126 is nearly 15 hectares. Saw another one, field 144 is 30 hectares in size. We do have a custom crop schedule available to us on this particular map. And if we take a look down through our prices screen, you will see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are available to us in Farm Sim 22. In addition, we have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk, as well as our silage, hay, straw, and grass. With respect to base game production items, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items as well. We do have the ability to buy bulk lime. We do have a stone crusher available to get rid of our stones. And then we have fermented corn meal, corn stalks, cracked corn, wet cake, rye, silage corn, alfalfa, and alfalfa hay as additional fill types, including narrow soybeans. We have fill type of anhydrous. We are missing a language entry for that. Then with respect to the platinum expansion, we do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items. And then finally, if we are playing with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability to get rid of our separated manure. We do have a corn dryer on the map, so we have propane and dried corn. Then we also have the fill type of sand. As I mentioned earlier, we start out with a pickup truck, and that is all we have in our vehicle overview. We do not own any animals at the start. I don't really know why we have a cow barn, horse barn showing up here, because again, we do not have any land at the start. This map does have contracts available. We do have some production chains built into the map, but we do not own any at the start as well. And this map does not have any collectibles. Now that we run through that, let's go ahead and take a look at our precision farming soil map and see what the soil map does look like after it's been applied to these fields. Quite the interesting array of soil types. So to the south, we have a fair bit of sandy loam and a little bit of loam intermixed. To the north, though, we have kind of the flip of that. We have a lot of loam, a little bit of sandy loam and silty clay intermixed. Then right across through the center of the map, we do have a bit of a swath of loamy sand. Typically, we go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet, but, well, we have one thing, and that is our 1986 pickup located right here. At that point in time, we would also typically go ahead and take a look at our starting farm, but since we do not have a starting farm on this particular map, since we don't own any land, Let's go ahead and just fast forward straight to the fly around portion of the map. We're gonna fly around, take an aerial look at the entirety of the map. I'm gonna to try to hit all of the various farm areas with that flyover. Then we'll come back to the vehicle shop here, hop into our Mahindra, and then do a proper drive around where we try to hit each and every cell point and each and every farm area. Let's get a little bit of the altitude. We are looking due north at this point. 
take a look down and spin her around. There we have our vehicle shop. Vehicle shop, we do have the ability to buy propane. Now we're looking off to the west. And off to the west, we have that first arable farm I mentioned at Farmland ID 101. Now, with respect to many of these farms, many of these farms we can sell most, but not always all of the things that are available. For the most part, a lot of the farmhouses are permanently on the land. And occasionally we're going to see things like this little transformer also seems to be permanently placed on the map. Occasionally we see pads of concrete that are kind of connected to buildings. The building goes away when we sell it, but the concrete pad is going to remain. Therefore, it is ultimately going to affect some of the terraforming capabilities of the player going forward. Coming over here to the west. Here we have, what I mentioned, the farmhouse at farmland ID 87. Just trying to look through my notes. So we have a farmland house here at farmland ID 87. But the way the farmlands are laid out, this shed, which really looks like it's kind of connected to, based on how the roads are set up, is over on a different farmland, farmland ID 86. Just something to point out, if you're maybe looking about that area, you'll need to buy two farmlands in order to make use of that shed. Got a cool little country, country church here with graveyard in behind it. Lots of really, really nice details like that. We have a pallet warehouse located right over here. Kind of right to the east of field 162. The pallet warehouse is one of the productions that is available. While it isn't technically a production, it does use the production functionality. We have a fuel depot down below there, as well as a cell point. We've got the bear grounds located here. There's also the animal dealer. Coming across the northern part of the map, let's go ahead and just kind of take a look to the south. While the map is not flat, there are subtle rolling hills. I would not call the map hilly by any stretch of the imagination. I would think that you would probably be able to play this map kind of under specking your, your vehicles as far as horsepower requirements. And you shouldn't run into too many issues. Now we're coming over here to the dairy chicken pig farm that's at farmland ID 108. What's interesting about this farm is if you look at the map, you wouldn't think that this exists because there aren't any hot spots that are popping up. And we're gonna see a trend here at a few of these maps that are very, very similar to this, where we have a fully made out map or fully made out farm, but there are absolutely zero hot spots popping in here as association. So here we have Farmland ID 108. We're looking right at it, but there are not any hot spots there. Here we have a cattle farm, Farmland ID 106. It's a little farmhouse, a nice bank barn, cow pasture behind it. And the hot spots that we have here are for the silos, not for the animal area itself. We've got a nice train that runs through. Ultimately winds its way up over to the, going across the northern part of the map. You see that down below there. Lots of really nice detail elements. Uh, let's go over here. Here's a really nice detail element. I think we're gonna come across. There's covered bridges on the map, and I came across the covered bridge 
that had um, bollards put up. Like clearly, it wasn't intended for traffic anymore, but the bridge remained, and they, it was a more modern bridge, just just down south of that. Here we have a couple farmhouses. Now they're really not tied to any real farm buildings themselves, but there's just a couple nice kind of farmhouse estates, and these do have farmhouse icons associated with them. So they should have sleep triggers in them. We have a horse pasture just south of that farmhouse. Down this road, we have an arable farm. Farmland ID 93. And then this is tied, that silo is tied to farmland ID 92. And it's been set up with these two large pig buildings. You'll see scattered around the map, we have these high tension power towers. These do not have collisions. So you'll be able to drive straight through those. Hired help will also completely ignore those. So as far as example again about things not being sellable, the pig building sellable, this concrete, this concrete thing, it's not it's not sellable. It stays, both of them. It really does kind of impact your ability to use this space if you get rid of these two huge pig buildings, because you're going to have those two concrete, what look like giant oversized concrete benches, right? They're going to stick around. Something else that sticks around that doesn't appear to be tied to the building, although visually you would think it would be tied to the building, is this concrete pad that these feed silos are tied to. If you sell a building, the concrete pads stick around. And again, that ultimately is going to affect your ability to kind of do something else with this land. I was really surprised at the number of possible farms on this land. I hadn't really counted them up entirely, but I feel like there's well, well over 10 different possible kind of farm areas. This might be that bridge that I was speaking about. There's a couple covered bridges. I've got a soft spot in my heart for covered bridges. And I really like how this is set up. But, you know, we had the original covered bridge. And it's just been taken out of service, but it sticks around. Maybe it's a historical building. It's got some local significance to it, right? So they didn't take it down. It's still here, this great picturesque area, right? But then they put in this more modern bridge just downstream from it. Really cool attention to detail. Now, as far as production being built in, we have five things built in. We have the pallet warehouse, which we already talked about. There's a chemical shed, a seed shed, a corn dryer that's actually associated with the very first farm we looked at, of the farmland ID 101, and a garden area. So the garden's going to be at one of these other farms. And we have a little arable farm. There are three grain silos just kind of hanging out over here all by themselves. Whoever buys this farmland is going to get access to those. Same with this shed right here. It's just kind of hanging out tied to this farmland. We know that one of those large pig buildings across the street from this is my personal favorite farm on this map. This one again is going to be cows, sheep, pigs, and chickens. Farmland ID 7. I just like how this is set up, right? We got our farmhouse. We got our cow build barn. We've got then chickens. We've got some storage sheds. Coming back here further, we have our sheep and pigs located in the back. Got a little municipal airport. 
That's where that airplane is taking off and landing, no doubt. And then we come over here, kind of the, uh, the recreational area of the map down here in the extreme southeast corner. We have Anhydrous Spy Point located over there. Kind of a little bit of a lake with a dock, possibly a boat loading ramp as well. A little golf course. A little golf course set up down here. And you know what? I might have a soft spot in my heart for covered bridges. But I've also, also have a soft spot for local dirt tracks. That's right. We've got a local dirt track on the map that is set up right here. Just south of town. Welcome to the, uh, welcome to the speedway. Yeah, we're coming through town. Lots of cell points here in town. We got our local high school with the baseball stadium and football stadium. Got another farm area down here. And we'll just make our way slowly back up to the vehicle dealer. That's where we're going to jump into our Mahindra and drive around and check out all of these areas. Back up here at the vehicle shop, we've got some machinery stationed out front here. It's nice to see, right? We do have a propane buy point and we will need propane for our corn dryer. So this is where we're going to come and get that. But as far as our dealer trigger, well, it's not it's not up front like you might expect. We're gonna have to come around the side. Easiest way to get to it's come around this side. And we have a side entrance to the dealer, and here we have our buy trigger. And then we have our dealer maintenance trigger located right here. And the dealer trigger is right here as far as maintenance. It's not indicated. Would like to have seen that. Here we have our bomb point for our vehicles in this parking lot. Not a bad sized area for our vehicles to spawn in at. I suspect it's just going to possibly be one row, given the fact that we've got these light poles that do have collisions to them. A decent area for things to exit out of. I'll just go in here and show you. That's where our dealer trigger is. And let's head on out and uh, hang a left here. We're going to pass the farm and we're going to run all the way to the northwest corner. Then make our way back. Nice attention to detail on the road network. We got turning lanes. You're going to see that throughout the map is uh, turning lanes. A lot of the fences that you're going to see along the fields can be sold. I was able to sell several fences at various areas that I just randomly tried to sell. Slow down. All right, we're coming into more of a residential area. 45 miles an hour. Since when did I pay attention to speed limits? Seriously. So we don't have a bakery production point 
What we do have on the map is a bakery cell point that's located right here. We also have our fuel point over here. This is Dodge Country, it appears. And then we have our warehouse. This is going to be for pallet storage. Right, you're going to have your your loading triggers, your unloading triggers and such inside up here. All right, so you have your unload triggers. You've got your interactive icon in here. And it's basically going to store all of this stuff, right? And it's just one for one input versus output. So with respect to our score, we are going to begin the map at full point. With respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. We're also going to be giving the map a full point with respect to the ability to sell all our basing props, production items, and animal outputs. Just wait here. I did check a lot of these cars do have different numbers on them, but every car is not actually numbered unique. I was curious because we had so many train cars here. Just coming over here to the fairgrounds. Anytime, anytime. All right, seriously. Anytime. Here we have our fairgrounds. Really nice. Just, I would really like to see, would really like to see this map get updated here in the next couple weeks to clear up that log i like my logs to be clean call me old school call me an old timer call me someone that's over picky it has uh too high of expectations but i just like to have a nice clean log and uh the map the map looks great i mean really DR modding it's always done a great job making maps that visually look great. Right? The original author of Upper Mississippi River Valley for FS17. Very popular map. Has made its way to FS19 and 22 through other mod authors. Map author of many other maps. They all visually look great. Just would like to see a little bit more uh, cleanliness in the log. This is like a radio area. This is really cool, right? Look, we got the we got the stands. We got the judging area here. Right? We could sit in here and we could we could judge our our rodeo riding. We could do our barrel barrel races in here. I don't know what this is. It's like, is this like a, I mean, it, it's, it's two roofs to a silo, right? It's just like, like, is this like a, a, a frisbee that a giant like slammed down in here? It's cool. I like it. I like the fairgrounds. I, I wish we had animated animals in here. You know, if I were going to be a little picky, I'd like to have seen some animals just kind of stuck in these pens and stuff for the for the weekly cattle auction That's, I mean I would just download this map to look around drive around it if you don't want to play on it um, I wish I had time to play on it myself are you serious 
honest politicians? I don't know. Is that a thing? This is a fantasy map. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Back to uh, back to the reality of the map tour. So there's a huge, huge suck section of the northern part of the map here that is tied up with with that facility right over there. jump over that real fast and we'll come check out this arable farm right by the uh, right by the shop I'll be a little curious if the uh, if the AI traffic follows the speed limits welcome to our ethanol production So we have our office. And then we would need to come in here and, uh, right. We even need to get our moisture tested. Now you may find on this map a lot of times where you come up to these doors, they don't work. That's because a lot of these sheds have been designed where you have to go inside and open them from the interior. So we have another dealer trigger here. Ah, we got working scales inside of here, right? Scale house. Just really great details. And then inside of here, we have our commodity cell point in our ethanol plant cell point. Oh no, this is a, this is a buy point. I wasn't paying attention to those icons. So this is, this is that wet cake. I don't know what we do with wet cake. Let's check our animal food overview and let's see what we have here. So this is a little interesting. So for our cows, we have total mixed rations for total mixed rations and milk. Silage for silage. Hay is going to be hay, grass, alfalfa, and alfalfa hay. Grain is going to be soybean, corn, sorghum, wheat, barley, rye, narrow soybean, cracked corn, and fermented cornmeal. So we do have custom food requirements. So sheep are going to be grass, hay, straw. You can feed your sheep straw, alfalfa and alfalfa hay. I mean, they're not goats, are they? We have pigs, we have pig food, we have grain, wheat, barley, pig food, protein, sorghum, corn, sugar be cut rye, root crops, soybeans, narrow soybeans, and pig food. Horses, hay, alfalfa and alfalfa hay, and chickens. Wheat, barley, corn, and sorghum. Then here we have our cell point down here for the ethanol plant. Make our way out of here. Try to make our way out of here.
like how we have in out scales we had in out lane that was separate of the scales really cool details so our first of many farms on this map we do have a functional sleep trigger within the farmhouse We're just gonna skip over that just for the sake of time because I know this video is gonna run long. I know we're gonna take a while on this because we got a lot to walk around and take a look at. So inside the farm office, right, we have a workshop trigger. Well, the actual trigger itself is inside here and we have that flagged off. Right. And again, these doors, they don't open from the outside. They open from the inside. You gotta go through the people door in order to get in and out of the building. This is our grain dryer slash silo. So we're gonna need to deliver propane to river bottom propane tanks. Here we're gonna do our dump and fill triggers. And it's just a silo for normal crops, but for corn, you can do dried corn. So here you have our interactive icon. So our inputs are gonna be corn and propane, propane in order to do dried corn. And then for every other crop, it's simply a silo, 100 in equals 100 out. And uh, that's the farm. Again, everything here can be sold with the exception of the farmhouse, I'm pretty sure. Just check. Oh no, we can sell the farmhouse on this one. So everything can be sold here except for this light post and this transformer. Not that big of a deal, but we'll see a little different story at other farms. Let's go ahead and make our way past the shop to the Phantom Farm that doesn't have any hot spots. And we have gone ahead and bought all of the farmland. All right, so here we have a, a working farmhouse. We do have sleep trigger inside of here. Fairly sure. I went around all these earlier. I'm just not 100% remembering every single one. So we have our cows, 45 cows here. This is gonna be our fill point for probably manure. We have our dump point for food. And then this is a silo, a food silo. We have our slurry point around the side here. So this is where we're gonna dump product to go into our feed silo. Up top, we have bale storage, bale and pallet storage. Super cool, plus other storage. Got our manure heap there. This 
It's gonna be for our pigs. 150 pigs in here. We have our food trough. It's gonna be our slurry point. Right, we have the really cool like when we have multiple levels to these buildings. Right, so storage above the pigs. Inside of the cow barn, we have then our chicken coop. 360 chickens. So there are eggs, we have our food. Here we have the milk point. And uh, that is, that is it, right? So that is the Phantom Farm. I don't think we can sell the farmhouse on this one. Just down the way, we then have a dairy farm, a cow farm. So we just have a deco farmhouse here. Three grain bins. A little square body GMC. Look at that. Cool little detail. This building is going to stick around. The farmhouse is going to stick around as far as what you can and can't sell. Bale storage up top as well. We can pop this door and come down below to our straw area. Then here we have our slurry. Our food trough. We have our manure point, milk, right? Uh huh. Now over here we have water trough, 500 cows in here. Really cool little farm area. All right, now let's see. We need to try to find our way south a little bit. We'll take a left here at the main road. Take a look across the way. Right, like I said, it's not flat, but we really aren't super hilly either. Here we've got a couple of those farmhouses, as I mentioned, that are up here. Just kind of sit off the road. Details. Right, watch out. There's an underground gas line here. When you're doing your terraforming, stay away from the gas lines. They are marked. Let's go ahead and take a look at our lands here again. And we are right here. 
So what's interesting is like the farmhouse is farmland 95. The shed that we see is actually at 96, right? Then we have another farmhouse down here at 94. Then there's a horse area that we don't see popping up here. That's in 117, right? So one might think, oh, well maybe this, right? This really nice, this really nice shed up here, up on the hill. Clearly it's, it's, it's associated with this really nice house that's right in front of it. It's on different farm lane. So, you know, right? Not that big of a deal, but again, it is on different farmland. I like this area. Right across from the street, we have a winery. Now this winery is just deco as best as I can tell. We do have a couple buildings back here in the winery area that we can sell. The winery itself cannot be sold. But these two sheds are sellable by the player if you own the land. This horse building is kind of all by itself on this farmland. 16 horses in here. Huh. We can open and close the window shutters. Kind of cool. So we have our food trough, straw. Are we here for our horse? Now, while we make our way over to the next farm, which is really just around the corner, I want to address the grass. So there was a little bit of a debate in uh, the discord in the community discord around this grass this is a grass that we've seen in platinum expansion the same grass we see in premium expansion there was a little concern around this grass as to uh, how it was made available but upon further inspection we believe as far as the as far as the Discord community, uh, my particular Discord community, we believe that in early November, Giants updated the textures for the map grass with an update prior to premium expansions release, and we believe that this grass has been added. That's the assumption that we're working under at this point in time. If that's proven false, then, then I stand corrected and we'll be very curious as to where and how this grass came about. But that is the working assumption that we're working under at this point in time. So we have a farmhouse up here and this is gonna be at Farmland 1993. So we have some storage silos. Fuel silos, grain silos. A nice machine shed. Another shed. Now that silo over there in that barn, that's actually a different farmland. Okay. Nice little farm here. I call it an arable farm. No animal areas pre placed. Now, with respect to build mode, typically by now we've already taken a look at build mode, but given the 40 plus mods that are part of this mod pack that are included 
are strongly suggested to be downloaded with the map. Uh, the build mode is going to be just overly populated with buildings and such that are part of the mod pack. I will, I will point out one thing. In build mode, right under, under, um, cell points. There is a farmer's market that is associated with, with the map. But the problem is, there's no textures. Right, so we get some, some of these exterior lights, and we get a, we get a dump trigger. But if I just put it here, just to put it here, right, there's just no building. Right, I hope that gets updated. Either we're not supposed to be able to buy that, or it's missing a lot of something. And then up here on our left, we have the large pig farm. Those two large pig buildings. We got our farmhouse. Nice shed here. I like how a lot of these buildings and farms are kind of color coordinated. So we have our food troughs for these pig areas there at the top of those. We have these triggers here. I'm assuming they're going to be slurry fill points. We have our buy icon buried in the concrete bench. 2,400 pigs each. Here we have the dump point for what I'm assuming is going to be straw. And uh, there you go. Whoa, I bought one and we already have a ton of pigs. We've got some grain silos. We've got a machine shed. We'd like to have seen a little bit, maybe some helper information, some accessories. To help us identify what that is a dump point for. Right. What it's a fill point for. Now over there to the left we have a farmhouse. And we have that shed that I was mentioning was really tied to a different piece of farmland. I don't think we need to drive over there just for, again, the sake of time. We're right here, right? The farmhouse is tied clearly to farmland 87, whereas the shed is over here on farmland 86. Just something to be aware of. That they are separate... Yet, based on how the roads look, they look to be tied together. We do have road signs, if you haven't seen those. Here, North River, we have Hogback, Riyar Road, Hogback, Rur Road, I don't know what that means. Really well done roads. This is really well done map. Just again, I don't want to harp on it too much. Just wish, wish and hope 
to uh, to have the law cleaned up a little bit with an update. Especially the row crop version. That one, that one, as I mentioned earlier, it's it's a bit messier. Uh, here's that great bridge. It's a bit messier than uh, than this version of the map. There were several entries for in Hydra's ammonia. Looks like they were missing, coded slightly wrong. So I'm not really sure if Anhydrous is going to work on that other map as well. Fields galore, right? All these fields tucked away between the woods, forested areas. So I was saying. I was saying I thought that might be an animated train, but we do have a rent train trigger. That should be a viable train. Coming along Highway 92. I believe that's what the road sign said. All right, just south of Field 49, we have three grain bins. If we buy that farmland, we can make use of those three grain bins. We've got a little arable farm over here to our right, just north of farmland, or north of Field 50. I think this would make a really good multiplayer map given the vast number of animal pins, farm areas, field layouts. You have lots of folks working their own farms, lots of folks kind of working cooperatively to do other things. Right, just some sheds. We've got that AGI building on the AGI pack. And then this gravel road to our right is going to continue on and eventually merge up with the main road around across the north. So the yellow roads on the PDA are paved roads, I guess, and everything else is gravel. to the farm that I really enjoy. Over here on our right. Got another one of those large pig buildings over here on our left. It's not tied to the same farmland as the farm on the right, but you could, you could maybe imagine that the farm on the right also operates that one. Kind of a newer Newer building, expanded the pig operations. So we have a deco farmhouse here. Can't go into that farmhouse. We have our pig area, so we have our slurry point. We're a dump point for our food. All right. There were milk. 45 cows. Straw. Right. We have a usable bank barn. So 
So we can store our vehicles and machinery up there. garage type area we have our chickens food eggs and drop off point for 360 chickens we have our manure heap for our cows I was just seeing if those were maybe covered silage bunkers. They're not. Here we have fuel. Fuel pump. And then we make our way around. We have another barn. Up here on the top level we can store. And then the bottom we have our pigs. So we have our slurry. 108 pigs. We have our food. We have our sheep. 25 sheeps. There are food there. Our wool inside of here. And then just some more. You can store your bales down there, smaller machinery, whatever. Like I said, of the farms here, I think I like this one. I like the white farm up there, the northwest corner also. I guess I'm kind of drawn to some of those more older school farm buildings. We need to hang a right back here. Lots of small fields down here at this part of the area. And again, as I mentioned earlier, all the fencing that I've tried to sell, I was successful in getting rid of. So if you don't like all the fences and the gates surrounding all those fields, you most likely, if you own the land, you will be able to get rid of those. Here we have a kind of a, a modern plus nod to the past farm, right? Everything on the left here is fairly modern. As far as buildings go, we have our silos, our sheds. We've got a nice farmhouse here, kind of an entry garden area. The farmhouse can be sold. Everything on this farm can be sold with the exception of this decorative garden area, right? That's going to remain. And, well, the old farmhouse. This old boarded up farmhouse, it's going to remain. That's what I kind of said. We got a nod to the past. This old truck. Satellite dish. We've got an old air conditioner here. Farmhouse has all been boarded up. Time of the distant past. And then right across the way, we have the new farmhouse, the new buildings. And someone has knocked over their mailbox. How terrible. How terrible is that? We'll just, we'll just put it right here. The road has ended. <laughs> we have a hayloft. Right there. And then 500 cows. They're going to be in there. We have our slurry point. Try to use that building, but we can't open that. We're gonna have to go through the people door. 
Once we find the people door. Alright, we got the office area. Coming into the business area of the cows. There you go, right? There's that train again. It just winds around the map, takes a long meandering course. I really don't think every car on that train is usable, but it is neat that it is indeed drivable. With respect to, can the farms be customizable? We're giving the map three quarters of a point there. We're taking off a quarter of a point because of some of the things like the pig farm back there, like I mentioned, the big the concrete chutes, I guess, part of the chutes, loading chutes for uh, loading pigs into those. It's not removable. I was not able to sell that when I tried. A couple other small, you know, nitpicky things here and there at the various farms that kind of are and aren't at the same point in the way. Um, so just a quarter of a point off there. The fact that we've got so many farms, it's its really, really amazing how well everything is set up here. Every point of the map you feel like is, uh, it, it, this could be a real life area. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. We have our anhydrous buy point, so this map is set up with anhydrous. All those are usable, maybe. I, let's see. Can I hitch? Can I try to hitch to it? Oh my gosh, they are usable. Neat. So we can just make use of the... I uh, doubt all those are. Maybe they are. These are. Are these usable? These are usable. How about these? Are these usable? Ah! They are nice. You don't need to buy your anhydrous applications. Just, uh, just use those. Sweet. Buildings where appropriate are using the new texturing technique. Yes, I'm just going to go ahead and get a map point there. I did not go and look at every single building at every single farm. But what I can tell you is... I didn't feel that that there were a whole lot of just awful, awful textured buildings really impacting your enjoyment of the map. And that really is kind of the point of that scoring metric is to make sure that we don't have just really awful, awful buildings. So we've got a couple sheds here alongside the high school. These are on their own farmland. So you can buy those and this this field. The last farm that we're gonna look at during this tour is right here. This is kind of a small arable little farm area. A couple sheds, nice house. I mean, these guys have some really nice houses here. I might want to move to Iowa if, if there's this much money in farming. Either that or land is dirt cheap. <clears throat> and then we have our town area. Where we're going to have several different cell points available to us. Football field. Oh, I wonder what the score is. 
I knew the uh, the baseball field's got its own scoreboard. Oh, we have to track. Get off the field! Uh, it is 10 minutes and 37 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Oh, the home team has got five points up. 28 to 23. Okay. We got our track, right? We have the Elma Creek Baseball Stadium here. But we do have a custom texture for the uh, for the building. We got a couple custom texture for the scoreboard. We got the Hawks High School. Interesting uh, use of the uh, was that the grocery store? I don't think I've ever seen it used as a high school before. And then coming into town, we got multiple cell points. As I said, we have a green cell point here. Been nice to have maybe seen a little bit more production implemented, right? Like a bakery up where we had the, the bakery building, but it was just a cell point. That could have been the grain mill. Here we have the chemical shed. Let's go ahead and take a look. It's just going to store. Well, actually, it's not storing. It's it's making. I am uh, I'm basically making herbicide and liquid fertilizer from nothing. Out of here, all I got to do is buy it and now I'm making liquid fertilizer and herbicide hmm. isn't that fancy Nancy so we are over here in town we have then FS grow mark we've got another area for charging we have the fertilizer shed seed shed Seed shop, gas station, propane, farmer's market. We have a farmhouse there. And, uh, well, there's the speedway, right? Well, we have to end it on the speedway. We have to try our, especially now we're loaded down with, with corn cake. We should get lots of rip on those rear tires. We got our cell point there. A little park going on. So this is a fertilizer shed. And then across the street, we have our seed shed. Right in there. Again, this is probably going to be just like... Right? We're just now making seed. Suddenly. Oh, we got an ice cream shop in town here. Dairy Queen. Oh, come on. Right? I mean, this is great. Ah, we got church. Church lights are on. Somebody's home. And our last scoring metric is going to be player interactive areas being clearly marked. We're going to knock off a quarter of a point there as well, just because we are missing the the trigger for the uh, I'll let this, no entry beyond this point. Authorized vehicles only. I am 100% authorized, okay? i got to try this out. 
Right, it'd been nice to have had indicator markers at some of the maintenance points around the various farms. And then also with respect to, oh, they hit the tires. And then with respect to also the main dealer. I'll tell you what, this is kind of a, this is a lightly banked flat track. There we go. So that's going to give this map a score of four and a half out of five. I'd love to know what your all's thoughts are on this map. DR Minus has several other maps over at his itch.io page. If you like this map, you may need to want and go and check out his other work as well. Again, he was the original author of UMRV Upper Mississippi River Valley way back in Farming Simulator 17. And until next time, what can you do on this dirt track? Oh no! Oh no, we're going through the infield. Happy farming!